A line structure is a method of drawing or representing organic molecules. Line structures can also be called skeletal structures or bond line structures or skeletal line structures or kind of any combination of the word line and bond and skeletal. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to draw line structures and also how to read or interpret line structures. What I'm showing you here is uh, the same molecule. It is a C5H12 molecule, and I'm showing it represented in a Lewis structure, which you're familiar with. And this is the exact same molecule represented as a line structure. So you can see that the line structure really condenses down the Lewis structure representation. Before I show you how to interpret or how to convert a Lewis structure into a line structure. I'm going to make a list up here of some of the things that we do not draw, we do not show in a line structure. So there's some pretty specific rules when you're drawing a line structure about what you are allowed to draw and what you're not allowed to draw. First thing you probably notice, we don't use the symbol for carbon atom in a line structure. So we will not write the letter C to represent carbon atoms. Also, you've probably noticed that we do the same for hydrogen, or I guess we don't do the same for hydrogen. We do not write the letter H to represent hydrogen atoms in a line structure. And then one more thing that you might not be able to notice, but I'm going to point out to you, we do not show bonds between carbon atoms and hydrogen atoms. So carbon-hydrogen bonds are not shown. And this is not optional. You, When you draw a line structure, you never use the letter C to represent carbon. You never use the letter H to represent a hydrogen and you also never draw the bonds between carbon and hydrogen atoms. Now, the, any other atom in the molecule, you would show that molecule or that atom. So for example, if there was an oxygen atom in the molecule, we would use the letter O. If there was a nitrogen atom, we would be using the letter N to represent the nitrogen. Okay, so looking at this Lewis structure here, I'm actually going to copy it so that I can kind of mark it up a little bit. And we're going to basically get rid of all of the things that we're not allowed to draw in a line structure. We're going to get rid of all the C's and all the H's and also all the carbon hydrogen bonds. So I'm going to use my eraser here. I'm going to get rid of all the hydrogens and the lines that represent the bonds between carbon atoms and hydrogen atoms. So this is erasing the hydrogen atoms and the carbon hydrogen bonds. They're just all gone. And I'm also now going to erase the symbols for the carbon atoms. Notice that we don't eliminate carbon-carbon bonds. The only bonds that we erase are carbon-hydrogen bonds. So these bonds between the carbon atoms, they need to stay. Um, I just need to get rid of the symbols for the carbon atoms. So this is what we have left. This is all that we are allowed to show when we're drawing a line structure. Basically just four lines for this particular molecule. These four lines represent the carbon-carbon bonds. And these are the four lines that are being shown in this line structure. It doesn't quite look that way, but let me number them. Line number one, number two, number three, number four. And if we go up here to the line structure, one, two, three, and four. So they're all there. The difference between this representation and this representation, first of all, is that um, we take these lines and we bring them closer together so that they're actually touching, you know, kind of to save space. If we get them too close together, though, it's kind of hard to tell exactly how many lines there are. You know, they're just going to kind of merge into one line. So the other thing that we do to make it easier for us to tell them apart is we just we angle them. Um, so we just twist them a little bit so that they're sitting at angles with respect to each other. And this makes it easier for us to see where each line starts and where each line stops. So we just end up with something that looks like this, like that. And so that's how we would go about drawing a line structure. Now, in terms of interpreting or reading a line structure, so for example, if somebody gives you a line structure and asks you to read that line structure, meaning could you turn that into a Lewis structure? Or a question might be, you know, here's a line structure. How many carbon atoms are present? How many hydrogen atoms are present? What's the molecular formula for the molecule that's being represented by the line structure? Kind of anything along those lines. Um, 
So when you're asked a question like that, what you have to do is take what you're looking at and interpret that and turn it into a Lewis structure, at least in your mind, if not on paper. So how do we go about doing that? Well, when we're looking at a line structure like this, we have to be aware that all that we're looking at are the carbon-carbon bonds. So maybe one thing that you might do, a lot of students like to do, is put dots on the line structure. I'm gonna, actually, I'm gonna redraw, I'm gonna redraw this so I can leave one uh, untouched. So a lot of students like to put dots at the beginning and at the end of every single segment in the line. Put a dot at the beginning and the end. And these dots represent the carbon atoms in the molecule. Putting the dots on the line structure makes it a little bit easier for our eyes to distinguish each one of the line segments. So again, what I've done is I've put a dot at the beginning and the end of every segment, and those dots represent the carbon atoms. So those dots are my carbon atoms. And that's how I locate the carbon atoms. So this line structure has five carbons. Now the second thing that we have to do to kind of fill this in is figure out how many hydrogen atoms there are in the molecule. And this is a little bit trickier because not only do we not see the hydrogens, we also don't see the carbon-hydrogen bonds. So there's hydrogens here, but we don't know where they are because we don't even see their bonds. In order for us to know how many hydrogen atoms there are, we have to remember, or you have to learn if you haven't le learned this yet, all carbon atoms have four total bonds, always, no more, no less, four total bonds. So when we look at a carbon atom in a line structure, we're gonna be able to see some of its bonds, maybe not all of its bonds, but we know for sure that it has a total of four bonds, no matter how many bonds we can see. So let me erase these C's because they're in the way. And let's focus on this carbon atom right here. For this carbon atom right here, we can see one of its bonds. This carbon atom right here, we can see one of its bonds, but we know that that carbon has to have four total bonds. We can only see one, which means that it must have three more bonds, and those three bonds are all to hydrogen atoms because hydrogen bonds are left out of the line structure. So let's try the next carbon. This carbon right here, we can see one, two of its bonds. We can only see two, but we know that it must have four. So that means it has two hydrogens missing. This carbon atom right here, we can see two of its bonds. We know that it must have a total of four bonds. So since we can only see two, that means it has two that we can't see. And this right here, same thing, we can see two. That means that two of its bonds are hidden. And here's one more. We can see, for this carbon atom, we can see one of its bonds. So that means that it has three more bonds that we can't see. And this is kind of the Lewis structure for this molecule. In order to make it a true Lewis structure, we would need to actually write the symbol for carbon in on this molecule. But we've got enough information here that we can see there are five carbon atoms, and there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 hydrogen atoms. Do you notice that this molecule here that we have drawn is exactly the same as this molecule right here? It's just got a little bit of a twist to it. So instead of having all the carbons in a straight line, I've got them kind of zigzagged a little bit. So this means, I'm gonna erase this thing right here. When we're looking at line structures, this line structure here represents the exact same molecule as this line structure here, even though the line structures don't look exactly the same. This line structure has a bit of a twist to it, but this line structure is just a straight zigzag. One thing that students get a little bit tripped up on when they're first learning about line structures is that the way that we draw the actual line structure itself doesn't mean anything. So this representation here is exactly the same as this representation here, or I could choose to draw it in the other direction, upside down, or I could draw it like this, or I could draw it this way. All that matters when I'm drawing a line structure is the number of carbon-carbon bonds that I'm showing and the fact that I'm showing them one after the other, after the other, after the other. So they're all kind of in sequence like that. And the way that I choose to point them, it doesn't mean anything. I mean, I could just, you know, just 
turn it around and it makes the same molecule. Um, so it, it's something, like I said, that trips a lot of students up when they're first learning this stuff, but you'll definitely get the hang of it as you see more examples. So let me just kind of scoot some of this stuff out of the way. I'm going to shrink up this giant molecule that I've made here. Um, make some of this stuff a little bit smaller and let's just practice. Uh, let's practice one more of these. So let's say that we have this molecule right here and we are being asked how many carbon atoms are in this molecule? How many hydrogen atoms are in this molecule? Let's figure that out. So the first thing that we're going to do is use dots to help us find all of the carbon atoms. There's going to be a carbon atom at the beginning and at the end of every single line segment. So let's draw in those dots and don't forget this one up here as well. There's a carbon atom at the beginning and at the end of every line segment. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six carbon atoms. And let's just kind of make a note of that, six carbon atoms. Now in terms of the hydrogen, how are we gonna figure them out? We're gonna remember that all of the carbon atoms have four total bonds. This carbon atom, we can see one of its bonds. So that means that it must have three bonds that we can't see, and those three bonds are to hydrogens. This carbon atom right here, we can see one, two, three of its bonds, and so that means it has one that we can't see. You know, I've changed my mind a little bit. I want to make this molecule a little bit more interesting. I'm going to put a double bond right there. Just going to add that double bond, and that doesn't change the number of carbon atoms that we've already counted, so it um, doesn't screw anything up yet. Let's look at this carbon atom right here. Let's figure out how many hydrogen atoms it has. We can see two of its bonds. So that means it has two hydrogen atoms for a total of one, two, three, four. Again, we're just operating on every carbon atom has a total of four bonds. This carbon atom right here, we can see two. And so that means it must have two more. And then this carbon atom right here. So this carbon atom has a single bond and it has a double bond, and the double bond counts as two. There's two lines there. So this carbon atom has one, two, three bonds, which means it only has one hydrogen atom on it for a total of one, two, three, four bonds. And this carbon atom has one, two, three bonds that we can see, which means it has one that we can't see. How many hydrogens was that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten hydrogen atoms.